Just a warning for this first story regarding the accusations against Oneness's Raven, there's some more adult topics in there and some possibly triggering topics as well. A few days ago, a Twitter post directed toward Oneness's Raven blew up. Now, we can't go into all the details because it is a long post. But to condense the main point so you'll still understand the gravity of the allegations made by the alleged ex-girlfriend of Raven, according to her, the two met when Oneness went to Japan back in February of 2020, where they had drinks. He apparently gave her so much alcohol to the point where she wasn't fully conscious when they ended up in bed together. The relationship continued for two years after that, where she describes in a lot of detail about him repeatedly cheating on her, possibly with a former RBW trainee, made her pay for everything so he wouldn't get caught, and posted an audio clip of what she claimed was Raven using violent language while talking about wanting to harm another ex-girlfriend who made him angry. There's a lot more stuff, like him going to her place knowing he had COVID, or how he's disliked among many fourth generation idols. However, we don't yet know if any of this is true. RBW immediately released two statements saying they are currently checking the facts and while they are examining the authenticity of the case, One Us will go about their activities as five members. If the opposing party's allegations are false, they will take legal action. In the meantime, there are people trying to debunk and poke holes in the accuser's story and photos, but we've also seen Kia from One We, One Us's brother group, unfollow Raven and removed all of their collaborations from SoundCloud. Again though, until we get an official update on this case, we can't really make a definite judgment one way or the other. Hopefully we also get an update on Inhypen Sunghoon after he just fainted at the JFK airport in New York. Now, I'm not going to show you the actual video of him fainting, but this is to show you guys that an ambulance did come to hopefully take care of him. Inhypen have not only been busy in Korea, but have also been on tour recently. I got to see them at KCON as well. On top of all that, Sunghoon just recently wrapped his stint as Music Bank MC, so it's no wonder he's being pushed to his physical limits. Fans are also worried about La Seraphim's physical well-being, as it was just reported a few hours ago that they had been in a minor car accident. Thankfully, no one was significantly injured. However, Yunjin and Chaewon are suffering from muscle pain and bruises, and because they just kicked off their first comeback promotions, those schedules have now been cancelled or postponed. On top of physical well-being, fans are also worried about Nayeon's mental well-being along with that due to a development regarding the stalker. We last talked about this person who has somehow returned to Korea despite a reported restraining order with arrest if he ever stepped foot in Korea. It was said that when he got to Korea last month, he allegedly found Jungyeon's phone number and tried to directly contact her. JYP Entertainment told us they were internally discussing it with various departments. Well, this person has now taken it another step farther and has found Nayeon's apartment filming a video of himself outside of it. Unfortunately, we don't really know more than that or what's happening happening as we speak, which is unnerving in this situation. Another update to a previous story is regarding the accusations toward Dancer Vata that he plagiarized 80s. We went into full detail in a previous video, but long story short, Vata from Street Man Fighter used a dance that many pointed out seemed way too similar to 80s' choreography from their 2019 song, Say My Name. Not only did fans point this out, the original choreographers spoke on this, and even 80s' Wu Young seemed to have called this out himself. And and although Vata and his crew have been known to be upset when others copy their dances, he has now released a statement saying at first, he thought this was something that would just go away, but has now decided to address it. He then goes on to describe how he came up with the dance himself, stating he believes the intention behind this move sequence is entirely different from the one it's being compared to. He ends it by saying he's disappointed by the lack of respect between artists and dancers, and while we wait to see if and how this is rebuttaled, the next update is a story story we briefly, briefly touched on last week about Jesse being stranded in Paris by someone people are calling a con man. Jesse recently embarked on her European tour and a few days ago posted an Instagram story telling fans she was stuck in London after paying her own way to get there and if we only knew what she was going through. She then followed that up by saying she has to perform tomorrow and quote, this man keeps stranding me outside. We later found out she was also stranded with her mom. After that, we didn't hear anything from her but a few people were able to contact her somehow, updating us that she eventually got into a hotel. Fans online began calling out the event organizer, aka the aforementioned man behind all of it, exposing things he's allegedly done similar to this. However, despite everything, nothing was going to stop her from seeing her fans in Paris, and it looks like nothing was going to stop her from exposing this man either. I didn't think that coming here, all these situations would happen. Um, 
But we'll talk. Oh, God. I... So I was going to cancel this tour because of this guy. This guy. And um, he's not. He's, he's a fucking coward. He's, he's, not, he's not even a fucking person. Like, I, I saw him today. And he was eating. And I said, I didn't even eat today or last night. I was outside stranded trying to find a hotel. You know, I, I'm gonna sell myself because it is what it is, but I'm gonna try my best tonight, all right? And you know what? Fuck this motherfucker. I'm gonna the best of my kid. To the best of my capability, okay? I love you guys, thank you guys so much for today. I don't know what it is with event organizers this week because by now you've probably heard about the disaster that was the planning of camp. For those who don't know, camp was quote a mega festival that was going to take place in LA with this crazy lineup. It sounded too good to be true and unfortunately it was. The day before the festival, artists like Bam Bam and Somi started posting things for fans, showing us they were ready to go, but something was definitely wrong. We then find out there were visa problems, which ultimately led to basically half the artists no longer able to appear on the show. SM Entertainment definitely threw shade in their statement, saying it was the event organizer's responsibility to take care of visas, especially after SM had already done their part by sending them everything in advance. And even though there was more shenanigans with ticketing, technical issues, problems with translators, the stage was wet from some rain, the idols being exhausted who got there last minute, from everyone I've personally heard from, it was the artists who were able to be there who made sure the fans had as much fun as possible. From Cheng Ah premiering a new song, to Super Junior saying screw it to what they were told to do, and not standing 10 feet away, but going all the way up to the barricade to give fans an unforgettable meet and greet experience. Again, even though staff kept telling them not to, Icon did something similar during their performance and even went over their allotted time just so they could talk with fans. Oh. We're going to the next stage? Yeah, let's go. No, I want to talk more. Okay, let's go. If you were there, let me know some of the other things that artists did for fans that I may not have mentioned. But hands down, the best thing to come across my attention was Epic High Tablo's rousing speech, rallying everyone there together to make the best of things. I implore you to watch the entire thing, but here's a tiny snippet. There are times in your life <laughs> where you don't always get what you want. And it breaks your heart. I'm sure none of you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> But to piggyback off Tablo's beautiful words, let's celebrate the positive things going on in K-pop that we did want. Congrats to Stray Kids, because on top of being one of only three groups in history to sell over 2 million albums in the first week, their latest album debuted number one on the Billboard 200. This makes them the first Korean act ever to debut their first two charting albums on the Billboard 200 straight to number one. The scary thing is they have such a long career ahead of them to break even more records because we just saw highlights celebrate their 13th anniversary. Also announcing another comeback at their concert going as strong as ever. Of course, we have huge comebacks taking place right now. And within those comebacks, congrats to DKZ taking home their first ever career music show win. We also have huge concerts taking place like NCT 127. But don't worry, Yuta didn't hit anyone with a sign ball at this one. No, no, no. It was actually Do Young this time. We also had Blackpink kicking off their world tour with what seemed like every celebrity you could imagine attending. And Jenny even performed an unreleased song, which I've been trying to avoid so I can experience it live. And of course, we also had BTS's yet to come concert in Busan, where Jin revealed he would be releasing his solo next with a song that we now know was gifted from Coldplay. And now we also know why this announcement was made, because it has finally officially been announced that BTS will indeed be enlisting 
working in the military, starting with Jin. Rather than waiting for the government to make a decision, it seems like Hybe and the guys have decided for themselves. Jin was said to have already applied to cancel his enlistment extension, and the other members will sequentially follow suit. This was huge, huge news that was apparently all over the news in Korea and around the world, but it's important to note that we won't have too long to wait, as according to their plans, the guys will all reconvene as a group once again in 2025. Yeah,